Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back. It's Let's Master English Podcast 42. Can you believe it's already Let's Master English Podcast 42? This is great. We're getting close to podcast number 50. Oh boy, that's going to be a big number for me. Let's Master English. This is a serious podcast, many different sections, and uh, it's my first podcast. So, to everybody who listens to this podcast, thank you so much. It's my pleasure uh, to be your English coach. So we have two sponsors today, DDM Open, and I'll tell you about DDM Open at the end of the podcast, and Audible, and I'll tell you about Audible right in the middle, right before the question and answer section. It's going to be a great one. Remember, everybody, we have a transcription team. So if you want to read the podcast, you can. Now, these days, Roberto has been leading the team, getting the dictation done, and they're doing such an excellent job. So all you need to do is go to www.letsmasterenglish.com. And if you go to our main web page, you will see a PDF file that you can download. And there you go. It's a transcription of the podcast. Of course, this podcast will not have a transcription for several days. It takes several days to make the uh, transcription. But you can join the team. We have a community on Google Plus called Let's Master English. Just join there and look for Roberto. And Azine is a number member. Uh, She's usually a leader also of the transcription team. Leave a message for those guys and you can join the transcription team. So that's just outstanding. Of course, if you have uh, an Android phone or an Android, whatever, tablet, and you use our app, we do have an app. You can get the app at www.letsmasterenglish.com slash app. On the app, you can also get the PDF file. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's developed by Max. Max is an unbelievable, wonderful computer genius. And if you want to thank Max, if you want to leave a message for him, if you want to read about him, please go here, www.patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, dot com, slash Maxim. That's M-A-X-I-M. And uh, he would love it, and I would love it too. Okay, today's podcast is full. We got the news. We got some facts. I think just one fact from Country Shane today. Five more questions. Our book club, part two. And I'll be talking again about DDM Open at the very end. So enough chit-chat. Let's begin. Your child is sick. He needs treatment. Your local hospital offers you one method, but you find a different method online and you think it might be better. Whose choice is it? If you're British, it's the hospital's choice. A British couple was just arrested in Spain after an Interpol alert went out for removing their child out of a hospital in order to seek a different treatment in another country. The saga is ongoing. Hmm, yeah, this is actually a serious story, not too funny at all. It's a very serious story, and uh, boy, I don't know, lots of issues here. Did you understand? Okay, let me read it one more time. I'm going to read it smooth and a little bit slowly. Are you ready? Here you go. Your child is sick. He needs treatment. Your local hospital offers you one method, but you find a different method online and you think it might be better. Whose choice is it? If you're British, it's the hospital's choice. 
a British couple was just arrested in Spain after an Interpol alert went out for removing their child out of a hospital in order to seek a different treatment in another country. The saga is ongoing. Are you familiar with this story? Yeah, it's a, it's a big issue. It's a big item, I think, especially in the UK, perhaps in Europe, maybe in Spain. In America, it's getting some attention. Uh, but personally, I saw the story and I think it's important. So let's go ahead and look at the first sentence here again. Your child is sick. Mm-hmm. So it could be the cold. It could be cancer. Who knows? Your child is sick has many, many, many possible meanings. In this case, it's a serious illness. Your child is sick. He needs treatment. Okay, so if your child had a cold, your child is sick. He needs medicine. Your child is sick. He needs Tylenol. Your child is sick. He needs cough syrup. It's all possible. But your child is sick. He needs treatment. Okay, so treatment is a key word here. T-R-E-A-T-M-E-N-T. Treatment is, of course, medical care given to a patient. A patient, somebody who's sick, you go to the hospital and the doctors take care of him. Doctors and nurses, they give him medicine or maybe a surgery or some other type of method to get this patient feeling better. Treatment, when we say the word treatment, it's usually something serious. If I have a cold, I do not say, Doctor, I need treatment. No. Something serious, then I need treatment. And also, when we say treatment, it's usually continuous or ongoing for a long period of time, not just one time. Usually for several visits, maybe a month, maybe six months. Treatments tend to be expensive. Your child is sick. He needs treatment. Your local hospital offers you one method. Okay, so your child is sick. Of course, you will take your child to the hospital. Probably to the local hospital, L-O-C-A-L, local hospital, the nearby hospital, maybe the regional hospital. So I don't know what that hospital would be in London, but probably something like Birmingham or Manchester or London, one of the big city, big hospitals. That would be your local hospital, your regional hospital. So your local hospital offers you one method one method of treatment. So you take your son there. My child is sick. The doctor says, mm-hmm, well, yes, we see. And for your child, this is what we can do. We can do this. This is the method, the treatment. So your local hospital offers you one type of treatment. But you find a different method online and you think it might be better. So you go to the hospital. The doctor says, we will do this type of treatment. Then you go back home and you're searching online. You're, you're researching the different types of treatment. And you see the doctor's treatment is, is actually not that good. In this situation, the local hospital's treatment was only between 70 and 80% successful. That means his child had a 30% chance of dying. Do you think the father is just going to accept that, the father and mother? No, they're not going to just accept that. So they did more research. They're looking for another treatment. And they found one they, uh, online. You know, they're not doctors, but we can do lots of research these days. And they found another method online, and they believed this other method might be better. The problem is, in the UK, 
They didn't offer that method. For children, not yet. But in many other countries, they do. So the sentence again. Your local hospital offers you one method, but you find a different method online and you think it might be better. Whose choice is it? Whose choice? Who gets to choose? Who can select the method? Now, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, shouldn't this choice be the parent's choice? Obviously, the child doesn't know anything. They can't make the choice. But should the choice be the hospital's choice or the parent's choice? Or maybe it should be the insurance company's choice? Uh Uh-huh. And if it's government insurance, is it the government's choice? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This, this is tough. Well, what do you think? What's, what's your opinion? If you have a child and your child is sick, do you want the choice to say, I will go to this hospital or I will go to that hospital? Or do you want the government to make that choice for you? Or do you want the hospital to make that choice for you, or the insurance company to make that choice for you. Whose choice is it? This, everybody, is a very important question. Well, if you're British, it's the hospital's choice. Dun, dun, dun. If you're a British citizen, which means if you're using the British healthcare system, which is funded by the British government, so if you're British, it's the hospital's choice, which also means it's the government's choice. You can't choose what to do with your child. If the hospital says, you must use this treatment then you have to listen to the hospital. Hmm. Well, the parents didn't like the idea of a 30% chance of dying. So, next sentence. A British couple was just arrested in Spain after an Interpol alert went out for removing their child out of a hospital in order to seek a different treatment in another country. So a British couple, mom and dad, were just arrested in Spain. This British couple, the parents of the child we are talking about, was arrested, picked up by police. Spanish police picked them up and took them to jail in Spain. A British couple was just arrested in Spain after an Interpol alert went out. Interpol. Interpol is the international network of police organizations. It's a proper noun. Big letter I-N-T-E-R-P-O-L. An Interpol alert is an announcement to all the members of Interpol of some sort of criminal activity that has left one country and may be in your country. So in the UK, the police made an Interpol report. They sent out an alert. There was a child taken from a local hospital by the parents. We believe the parents may have taken their child to your country. Please arrest the parents. That was the alert. That was the message, the announcement that went out on Interpol. A British couple was just arrested in Spain after an Interpol alert went out for, why for, removing their child out of a hospital. You cannot take your own child out of a hospital. Why did they do that, those crazy parents? In order to seek, in order to find 
a different treatment in another country. If you're a British baby, you must be treated in the UK. You cannot go to a different country. It's not your choice. If you try to take your child to a different country, you will be arrested. The saga is ongoing. The saga, this long, complicated story, is ongoing. It continues. We're right in the middle. Boy... This is uh this is scary. Now, this is just my opinion and I realize some of you might have the opposite opinion. And I respect that. And I would be curious to hear what you have to say. But just me um as an individual uh I prefer to make my own decisions. And I know, I know people make stupid decisions. In my life, I have made many stupid decisions, decisions that I regret, decisions that have cost me lots of money, lots of pain. I have made those decisions. But that's part of being a human. Sometimes our decisions kill us. Sometimes our decisions make us heroes. Anyway, I think it's my right as a human to make my own decisions. And of course, for my child too. If I had a child that was sick, of course, I want the best for my child. I don't want to have to be restricted to one hospital or one country. This family actually went to Spain. They had a second home and they were going to try to sell their home to get the money so that they could go, so that they could go I think to the United States to get this special treatment. Now as of right now September 1st they're still in Spain. They're in prison. And they have other children. So the children are all with relatives I think. I don't know. It's a terrible situation. Sad, sad, ridiculous, horrible situation. Personally, I do not like a big government. Yes, we need the government. We need the government to do many things. Um but they don't need to make these decisions. Now, once again, it's the hospital's decision, but the hospital is run by the government in the UK. It's a national healthcare system. Anyway, I thought this story was very important and I think uh it's important to respect the individual rights of each human. Now if they're doing something to cause pain or death or destruction to other people, then they should be stopped. But if they're doing their best to be creative, if they're doing their best to not affect other people or you know in a negative way I think people should be given complete freedom as much freedom as possible of course if people are walking around with knives <laughs> no they should be shot <laughs> anyway uh human rights I don't know big issue what do you think once again my question for everybody whose choice is it do you think it should be the hospital's choice the doctor's choice the insurance company's choice, the government's choice, or the parent's choice. I'm really curious as to what your opinion is. My opinion, the parent's choice. That's what I think it should be. Let's look at those words one more time. Good words today, not too many. Treatment, that's medical care given to a patient. Local, regional, or nearby. Arrested picked up by police taken into custody Ugh. an interpol alert interpol is an international network of police organizations so an interpol alert is an announcement to all members of criminal activity that has left one country and may be in your country 
went out. The alert went out, was sent out, was distributed. To seek, to find, to look for. And finally, saga, S-A-G-A, saga, a long, complicated story. Let's listen two more times. Your child is sick. He needs treatment. Your local hospital offers you one method, but you find a different method online and you think it might be better. Whose choice is it? If you're British, it's the hospital's choice. A British couple was just arrested in Spain after an Interpol alert went out for removing their child out of a hospital in order to seek a different treatment in another country. The saga is ongoing. Your child is sick. He needs treatment. Your local hospital offers you one method, but you find a different method online and you think it might be better. Whose choice is it? If you're British, it's the hospital's choice. A British couple was just arrested in Spain after an Interpol alert went out for removing their child out of a hospital in order to seek a different treatment in another country. The saga is ongoing. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Interpol is made up of 190 different countries around the world. If you plan on doing any <clears throat> illegal activity, the police will probably find you no matter where you go. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Good information from Country Shane. That's right, as of September 1st, 2014, Interpol, the international police community, basically, has 190 different member countries. 190 countries around the world are members of Interpol. Lots of Americans, when they hear Interpol, they only think Europe. They think it's a European police organization. Well, no. 190 different countries around the world, from France to Egypt to China to Nigeria, Brazil, the U.S., everywhere, everywhere, everywhere you go. There you go. So if you're, if you're a bad guy, <laughs> just stay where you are. Yeah, stay, stay where you are. Don't be going to other countries. They're going to find you one day. Yeah. Bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boy, bad boy. All right, we got question and answers coming up. But first, a word from our sponsor. Thank you so much to Audible. If you sign up, through me, you can get a free book, everybody. www.audibletrial.com slash LME. One more time. www.audibletrial. A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L. www.audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. That's less master English. If you go there, hey, click. You get this lovely little page. It says, Audible, an Amazon company. Download a free audiobook. Yay! And then you click on the button, and it'll show you. And then if you're logged in, I'm a member. So you already see uh, my ID and my password. It comes up. So, yes, you log in, and then it takes you to their bookstore. And they have over 100 50,000 audio books. It's just incredible. The biggest audio book collection online. And now, so what a lot of people do is they're <clears throat> members of my book club. And every month we kind of change books. So this month the book is Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and It's All Small Stuff. And it's written by Richard Carlson, 
Dr. Richard Carlson, and it's narrated by him too. It's a four hour and three minute long audio book. Now, the normal price for this book is like $22, something like that. But you can get it for free if you use my link again. Once again, audibletrial.com slash LME. Do I get money for that? Yes, they're a sponsor. But I only get a little bit and it's only one time. So it's like not an ongoing thing. However, what's going to happen is you sign up and you sign up for free. And you can pick this book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. It's a great book. It's about life philosophy. And this is the second week we're studying it, so we got uh, two more weeks after this. Today I will be talking about the second hour of this book in this podcast just a little bit. So uh, I want you to listen to that. So if you have the audio book or if you have the print book, then follow along. And give me your opinions. Send me your questions. We've got lots of people doing that right now. And it's lots of fun. We also have a few people on our Google Plus community. That's Let's Master English. Who are forming a study group for the audio books also. So this is fantastic. And I want you to participate. Enjoy it. So what happens? You sign up and you can get this book. Don't sweat the small stuff. And it's all small stuff for free. Now, one month later, they're going to charge your credit card for $14.95. Well, you can cancel before that, but if you like audible books, audio books, do not cancel. Because you pay that $14.95, that will get you another book, any book, that they have. Even if the book is $25, you can still get it for that one price. It's a membership, and that's the benefit of the membership. Now, some audiobooks are cheap, like $3, $4, but they're very short also. The new books, you know, the newer books, very, very expensive. So if you have a membership, it's much cheaper. But everybody, remember, let's be honest, these are audible audio books. They're sound, okay? You don't have the print in front of you. So you have to listen. You have to concentrate. So if your listening skill is terrible, do not sign up. I'm being honest. Don't do it. Just wait. Wait. Build your listening ability. Then get into these audiobooks. They're so much fun. For me, podcasts and audiobooks are my life. Seriously. It's every day. I'm listening to both. Um, I have a, a different, uh, what is it, membership at Audible where I get two books a month. It's more expensive, but uh, I listen to lots of stuff. Uh, we've got, of course, one for my book club and the one for my personal enjoyment. And then, of course, I also like to read books uh, and podcasts. Oh, boy, I love podcasts. Um, so I listen to a lot of podcasts, too. But I have to because I have no television. My life is all in my ears, in my head. <laughs> and it's a good life. I have no regrets. I like it. So once again, I would love it if you uh, joined the book club, or at least if you're interested in audiobooks, please join through my link, www.audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. And the spelling, once again, A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L. That's audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. Let's master English, L-M-E. Okay, let's get into those questions. Now, our first question is from ABD Allah Muhammad. Okay. Muhammad asks, how can I learn to speak well? It's a great question. And to be honest, Muhammad, the best way to learn to speak well is to speak as much as you can. I know, it's a simple answer, but it's true, Muhammad. When I studied the Korean language, 
you know, I had cassette tapes and videotapes, so I would listen to music, I would listen to conversations, I would buy books and listen to conversations, and I would watch TV shows and watch them and, and everything. But do you think listening and watching and reading is enough? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So what I started to do was repeat. And I would try to repeat just like the singer. Bomb or whatever. I can't remember. <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Any Korean listeners out there, they'll know. Wow, Shane listened to old music. Yes, I'm an old guy. I'm an old guy. I would repeat what the actors said in the television shows. I would repeat the conversation tapes just like the original. Repeat, 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 repeat. And then any time I saw a Korean person, I would run up to that person and say, 안녕하세요. 저는 Shane입니다. 한국말 좀 하고 싶습니다. Which means... Hello, my name is Shane. I want to speak Korean. In terrible pronunciation. Uh, but Korean people would talk with me and I would finally have my chance. But that was very rare. So I needed to develop my speaking skills by myself. And the way I did that was through listening. I would listen and repeat. Listen and repeat. Listen and repeat. And I would record myself and I would listen to the original. Then I would listen to me and I would see, oh my God, my pronunciation is terrible. And I would practice, 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 practice. That's what DDM is, Muhammad. DDM is all about listening and speaking, listening and speaking, listening and speaking. Just like the way I learned Korean, that's how I'm teaching um, English in DDM in that course. So Muhammad... I seriously recommend, if you can, join DDM. If you want to join DDM, I'm pushing DDM open today. Just go here, DDM open, DDM O-P-E-N dot blogspot dot com. One more time, DDM open dot blogspot, B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T dot com. DDM blogspot dot com. DDM Open is self-study. The price is unbelievable. Self-study means there are no live classes with me. However, many of the members in our community do have live classes together where they practice with each other, and that is so important. And actually, Miguel, uh, Coach Miguel, we can call him Coach Miguel, He's doing a lot of practice groups with DDM Open members. So, Mohammed, it's a very inexpensive way to get speaking right away. Now, next question is from Hope Hopes. Actually, everything was in Arabic, and I used Google Translate, and they said Hope Hopes. Okay, so the question is, should I use a dictionary to see where the stress is in each word? Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, English has thousands of words and the intonation can be different in many different words. How do you know where to stress each word? Should I look in a dictionary? No. Well, yes, of course. Uh, in the beginning, when you see a new word, if you're, you know, let's say you, you discover a new word today, you can find out where the stress goes. For example, Interpol. Maybe many of you know that. Is it Interpol? Is it Interpol or is it Interpol? Well, I think the dictionary, I'm guessing the dictionary would say Interpol, 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 Interpol. Yeah, the accent most likely should go on the end. However, hope, hopes, if you want to see where the stress is in each word, don't look for it, listen for it. The same answer as Muhammad. Listen. Listen to music. Music is a terrible place actually to learn pronunciation because the singers usually change the pronunciation. But it's a good idea to get the stress in words. Not always, but it's fun. If you like music, listen to, to music. 
watch TV shows and dramas. I think in Europe they call them serials. In America, sitcoms, situation comedies, weekly dramas. Watch them. Find a show that you enjoy and watch it religiously every week. Practice and practice speaking. Listen and speak. Now, once again, in my DDM classes, we do have a sitcom that we study. And I always tell the students, the sitcom has four characters. I tell the students, choose one. Choose one of those characters that you like. And every week, I want you to really concentrate on practicing like that person. There's a female character and three guy characters. And the three guys are really different. One guy is serious, one guy is crazy, and one guy is crazier. <laughs> but, they're, but they're actually kind of normal crazy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyway, um, so should I use a dictionary to see where the stress is in each word? Yes, for new vocabulary. But in daily, regular, spoken English, if you know the word, if you know the meaning... Do not use a dictionary. I want you to watch Americans or British people, whatever, speaking English. Watch TV shows. Watch TV dramas. Especially TV shows and dramas, everybody. And not something from 1855. Not old historical dramas. Modern dramas. Modern situation comedies. Watch those and, most importantly, repeat. Okay? That's my answer. I hope you like it, Hope Hopes. And the next question comes from Rodrigo Oliveira. What's the difference between worried and concerned? I'm worried about you. I'm concerned about you. Well, the difference, Rodrigo, is the spelling. <laughs> no, there, there, there's, there's more. Uh, basically, Rodrigo, they are the same. However, worried is a much more daily English word, more emotion. Worried kind of comes from the heart. I'm concerned. Concerned is more mental. It comes from the head. That's my simple, short answer. So if you're talking to your mother, are you going to say, Mother, I'm worried about your health, or Mother, I'm concerned about your health? Well, if it's your mom, it should be emotional. It should be worried. But if it's a doctor talking to your mother, probably he would say or she would say concerned. Okay? So they're, they're both great words and we can use them the same way. But if there is a difference, the simple definition, worried is emotional, concerned is more mental, intellectual. Got it? That's my short answer. All right. Next question is from Dede Ede. Dede Ede? Dede Ede? D D E D? I don't know. D E D and then E D E. Is Win State, that's big W, big S, capital W, capital S, is Win State another name for Wisconsin like Penn State? P, big P E N N, big S S T A T E. Mm. Uh, well, I, I don't know. My answer is I don't know. Uh, Penn State. In America, if you hear of Penn State, P-E-N-N-S-T-A-T-E, what they're talking about is Pennsylvania State University. It's a university, Penn State. And that's the nickname of the university, Penn State. Where did you go to school? I went to Penn State. Who's your favorite college football team? My favorite college football team is Penn State. Wisconsin, however... We do not say win state. We say the UW Wisconsin. Uh, we say the University of Wisconsin. Um, we say Marquette University. We In Wisconsin, as far as I know, and I grew up in Wisconsin, we never say win state. So, Dede Ede heard this in a podcast. If you can tell me which podcast it was, and please give me the time code. So give me the name of the podcast and where it was, like 7 minutes and 37 seconds. You find that, you send that to me. Send me an email. My email address, dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. You send that to me and I'll tell you exactly what they said. But for now, my answer is no. Win State, 
There's no such thing. Penn State is the name of the university. Wind State is nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> so find it and, uh, and I'll help you out. Okay? Thanks for the question. And finally, one more. This is from HR Yank 33 Pronunciation help. P-O-O-R. P-O-U-R. And P-U-R-E. Oh, boy. P-O-O-R. Poor. P-O-U-R, poor. P-U-R-E, pure. Now, actually, there's more to it than that. The word poor, P-O-O-R, like poor people or poor person, um, has actually two common pronunciations in America. One of them is ooh, poor, 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 poor. And the other is oh, poor, poor, poor people. People with no money, poor people, poor people. We do use both pronunciations in America. Personally, I think it's more common for me to say poor, poor, poor. The next word, P-O-U-R, pour me some milk, pour me a glass of water, as far as I know, almost always sounds like poor, like P-O-R-E. Okay, so poor basically has one pronunciation. Some parts of America may have a different style, though. That's possible. I'm trying to give you the standard pronunciation. And finally, P-U-R-E has, again, two common pronunciations. Pure, 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 and pure, pure, pure. So one of them is like a diphthong, pure, pure. It's like kind of a double syllable there. Pure, pure. I like to drink pure water. Oh, the air is so pure. But I think most people just say pure. I like pure water. The water is so pure. The air is so pure. Both are possible. For me, I believe I do say both. Yes. So once again, the typical, I'm going to give you my style of the standard pronunciation for P-O-O-R, then P-O-U-R, and then P-U-R-E. Are you ready? Poor, poor, pure. And I'll give you a sentence with all three words. Are you ready? I'll pour pure water for the poor. I'll pour pure water for the poor. Okay? Okay. It's Coach Shane's Book Club time. Once again, this month's book is Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. It's a great book, and this week we should have listened to or read the second part, the second hour of this podcast. It's a four-hour podcast, and this is hour two. So the chapters that we read were chapter 25. Smile at strangers. Look into their eyes and say hello. Mm, For me, so-so. I'm not that friendly. I'm not mean, but 25, not really for me. Chapter 26, set aside quiet time every day. Yes, absolutely. I do that. I think it's very important. Total quiet time. It's beautiful. Chapter 27. Imagine the people in your life as tiny infants and as 100-year-old adults. An interesting idea. I have not done this. Doesn't sound too practical for me, but what about you? Have you thought about this? Chapter 28. Seek first to understand. Absolutely. As a teacher, I know that the best way to teach is to learn. And to learn, in order to learn, we need to listen. So seek first to understand. How do you understand something? By listening, by looking, by reading. That's how. In chapter 29, become a better listener. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good with my students, but in my personal life, definitely I need to become a better listener. 
and he's got good advice. Chapter 30, Choose Your Battles Wisely. This was a really good chapter. This is something that everybody deals with every day. And uh, if you, I recommend reading chapter 30 closely. Chapter 31, become aware of your moods and don't allow yourself to be fooled by the low ones. When I was listening to this chapter, not only did I think about myself, but it makes you think about the people around you too. We need to recognize when somebody is in a low mood. Very good chapter. Chapter 32, Life is a test. It is only a test. Very philosophical. I liked the chapter. What did you think? Chapter 33. Praise and blame are all the same. I like that. This is an old expression. Praise and blame are all the same. Praise and blame are the opposite, right? To praise somebody, you did a good job. To blame somebody, because of you, it was a failure. But in the end, they're all the same. What does that mean? They don't matter. Mm, Great chapter, and I agree with this expression. Chapter 34, practice random acts of kindness. Absolutely, people need to do this more often, including me. One time outside my apartment, uh, there's an old lady who lives next to me, and I put my trash outside, You know, I was going to take it downstairs in five or ten minutes. And when I went back outside, my trash was gone. And the only person that could have taken it was the old lady next door. I thought that was so nice. And I haven't seen her since. But what she did was she practiced a random act of kindness. She didn't ask. She just did it. It was too nice and it made me feel really, really happy. Great. Great advice. Chapter 35, look Beyond behavior. Once again, especially for people in a relationship, husbands and wives, extremely important. This is something we do with our children, but let's be honest, many adults are old children. (laughs) So look beyond behavior is actually very important. Very important chapter. Chapter 36, See the Innocence. Yeah, Hmm. this was a tough chapter for me to agree with. Um, I think it's, I don't know. Do you think people are always good, always have good intentions? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think there are some people out there who really enjoy seeing other people suffer. I don't know. Check it out, chapter 36. Chapter 37, choose being kind over being right. Yep, I agree. Um, Good advice. Chapter 38, tell three people today how much you love them. Wow, this is tough for me. I'm not a really emotional guy, and I don't know if there are actually three people that I could tell today that I love them. Of course, I mean, I, I love them, but actually say it? Hmm. I don't know. It's not easy for me. What about you? Chapter 39, practice humility. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at that. Practice humility. Great expression. If you don't understand, read or listen to chapter 39. Chapter 40, when in doubt about whose turn it is to take out the trash, go ahead and take it out. I totally agree with this philosophy. Basically, to me, it means don't be a child. Chapter 41, avoid weatherproofing. Ooh, yeah. Um, One thing that I strongly believe in is that if I like you, I must like you for you. And I should never, ever, ever think that I will be able to change you. You are you, and if I liked you in the beginning, then I should like you for being you. I should not have some sort of image. I should not have some sort of protective idea 
uh, about how to further protect you. Avoid weatherproofing. Very important chapter. Chapter 42. Spend a moment every day thinking of someone to love. Not someone that you love, but someone to love. Hmm. And not so much for me. Not too easy for me. Chapter 43. Become an anthropologist. Yeah, I do like this chapter. Um, It's going to help you. If you read, listen to this chapter, it will help you deal with lots of problems. Chapter 44. Understand separate realities. Very important. Chapter 45, develop your own helping rituals. This is the idea of humanity, to help. Chapter 46, every day, tell at least one person something you like or admire or appreciate about them. Yeah. But then we go back to to praise, to blame. It's all the same. But at the same time, people like to hear nice things things, especially people close to you, especially people really close to you, like your husband or wife, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your son, your daughter. Every day, do you tell those people at least one thing that you like or admire or appreciate about them? Probably not. And we should because in the end, Who do we have? Only the people closest to us. Family is so important. Chapter 47. Argue for your limitations and they're yours. Yeah. Know your limits and accept them and be proud of them. Chapter 48. Remember that everything has God's fingerprints on it. Hmm. Uh, This chapter requires a little bit of religion. If you are not into religion, you might not like this chapter. Chapter 49, resist the urge to criticize. Yeah, that's actually pretty important. You know, we talk about constructive criticism, always very good. But some people just like to complain. Some people just like to criticize. But if you can't offer a solution, then you're wasting energy. To criticize takes lots of energy. And you could use your mental energy in another way. So unless you are planning to change the thing you're criticizing, perhaps it's best to resist the urge to criticize. There are so many wonderful things in life If you look for them. Chapter 50. Write down your five most stubborn positions and see if you can soften them. This is an interesting chapter. This is something that I probably should do, but later. (laughs) Chapter 51. Just for fun, agree with criticism directed toward you. Then watch it go away. This is really interesting. I like this chapter. And this is something that I will definitely do. So I'm looking forward to getting some criticism. Uh, Not from you guys, from the people that I talk with. People in my day-to-day life, which means my family. Uh, But I'm looking forward to getting some criticism. And uh, I'm going to agree with it. And not just, you know, fake agree. I'm going to truly agree. And then... I'm going to see if it goes away. So these were the chapters that I listened to. It was the second hour of the book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. It's a great audio book. It's also a great print book. There are two hours left in the book. And, of course, next podcast, I'll be talking about the third hour. So I hope if you're interested, join me in the book club. You can get the audio book, this audio book, for free if you go to www.audibletrial, that's A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L, dot com 
slash L-M-E. L-M-E, of course, Let's Master English. One more time, www.audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. Sign up. Sign up. Get this book. Don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. Listen to the chapters. It's uh, not... It's an audio book, so, you know, sometimes it's kind of tough, but it's really good stuff. The next book that, excuse me, that we are going to study will be a novel, and it's going to be longer. So right now we're doing one hour a week. The next book, I think, is going to be maybe two hours a week, but it's a story. So, I don't know. This, that'll be the, that'll be a test. That one might be tough, but uh, I hope that you're looking forward to it. It'll be a challenge, and then uh, we'll try and go back to something easier after that. So anyway, the book club, it's going on. Don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. You can get the audio book, or you can get the print book. It's a great book, talking about philosophies in life. And that brings us to the end of the podcast. Now, our second sponsor, once again, is DDM Open. DDM Open is a fantastic class for you. You can study my DDM lessons on your own. People who are busy, people who only have time on Sundays. Perfect. Every month, I send you eight lessons. I send those lessons at the beginning of the month. I send out eight lessons, and you can study them in one day, or you can study them two a week, or two this week, and then four next week, and then whatever. You know, you pick your own schedule. Now, what's really cool is with DDM Open, normally there aren't hangouts with me, but one of the guys who works with me, Miguel, we can call him Coach Miguel. When he's in a hangout, he is conducting hangouts with the DDM Open people. This is awesome. So if you are interested in joining a hangout with Coach Miguel, he will be leaving messages on the community. The community is the Google Plus community, Let's Master English. And uh, it's easy to see his logo. It's DDM, uh, what is it? I can't even remember. Be calm and join DDM. It's so awesome. And his name is Miguel. Uh, so you can uh, talk with him or just leave a message on the community. Coach Miguel, when is the hangout? I want to have a hangout. And this is for the DDM Open students. DDM Open students. So uh, talk with Miguel. And you can talk with each other too. People who join DDM Open I'm now giving you access to the files in a software called Box.com where you have a private chatting area. You can leave messages with each other. You can leave your Skype ID or your Google Plus ID and you can practice and talk with each other that way. DDM Open is a fantastic class. Join it today. The address to join is ddmopen.com blogspot.com once again that's ddm open o p e n dot blogspot b l o g s p o t dot com c o m just go there and uh all the information is right there and you can sign up and uh you're you'll be good to go so thank you very much everybody you guys have a fantastic week and i We'll see you next week. It's time for bed. It's been a long day for me. Okay, everybody. Together, let's master English.